So, for example, um, half of High Street on the seaward side had been built by 1834, uh, sorry, by 1820, but the rest um, was built till, late, till, uh, till later, um, between 1821 and 1834. Then the tithe map. Um, the, the tithe commissioners weren't interested in towns because it wasn't productive in terms of plants and animals. They were only interested in land that was productive, so they could tax it. Um, but it is a block uh, plan of the town, which is, again, I think pretty accurate. The really sad thing is there's two copies in the National Library, and they both got that bit missing, which is the bit of the problem. And, and this bit too, which is right in the centre of one area that I'm interested in, and then one of them has got this bit missing. It's in light grey. Um, so it's really sad that we just don't know the extent of building along the prom in 1843, which is something I was quite interested in. Um, and then, of course, we've got the Organ Survey map, which is the first one of any detail in the 1880s. And uh, finally, the, 20, the 50 inch, the massive map of the town, which shows every single building, glass house, tea bath, everything. These are glass houses in the back of Crumbling buildings. Uh, or Crumbling House, I mean. Um, so we've got enormous detail at this stage, but it is 1905. Um, Looking at land ownership, um, I've, I've produced this map showing um, the land occupied by Gugger, which is in the green and red, the land owned by uh, Nantios, which is in the light and yellow, so they've got two plots of land in town, one down near Pass Creek, because they own Pass Creek, and a plot of land along the Mill Leet. Um, somebody owned the castle, and I'm still trying to work out exactly who, but we think Probert of Shrewsbury owned it for a while, but possibly for Thomas Johns, and I'm not quite sure about that. And then the town, the corporation, owned Morrison and Morgamau and Haymice Glass, and that was empty. And they jealously guarded that. Um, uh, they stopped anybody building on it, so if anybody did build on it, they were fined. I think that was a way of making rent, because they never demolished the building. It was just shame, saying that um, you're not really supposed to build on here, but we don't really mind, because nobody else is going to use it for anything else, but we might as well make a bit of money out of it, and we're also showing we are the owners. <laughs> Sometime in 1808, the town council made a very sensible decision to lease out that property as building plots. They probably did it slightly earlier than that, but the town, the corporation minutes, the court records, are very, very um, incomplete. All the records survive, but they hardly say anything useful. It's quite clear that the mayor and the other officers of the corporation were making decisions between their two annual meetings. And um, so we've got um, no real detail. But we do know something very naughty was going on here. Because a lot of that land was leased out to councillors at extremely low rents. And they were taken to court by a member of the town itself, a, a, an occupant of the town. And, um, Sadly, I've been through all the records now, and this is something I was going to talk about in detail tonight before we came up with this project. Um, sadly, the, the court records don't tell us exactly what happened. One newspaper, the newspaper says the town council were um, successful in, in defending their right to lease out the land, and another newspaper report says exactly the opposite, and I cannot quite work out what happened. We do know one of the men responsible, and there's a, a quite hilarious report of um, what was going on at the time um, in, uh, uh, that was published when the corporations of uh, Britain were being um, uh, reformed in the 1830s. So what they did was, in all the sound, this, this is um, too difficult to build on because it floods, flooded regularly until recently, of course, but they did lay out um, a street system in Morgason, where we are now, uh, right here, um, and they built uh, uh, what's this right? Um, North Parade. Sorry, on the, on the line of Great Gate Street. And at right angle still at Terrace Road, Portland Street and Upper Portland Street, Corporation Street. And then these two streets, um, uh, Portland Road and Cambridge Street, were service roads for North Parade. So they were just serving the rear of the houses in North Parade. This was serving the rear of the houses in. Uh, North Parade and the, the, house, the rears of the houses in Portland Street, and then they became streets on their own right as um, they started building uh, carriage sheds and then blacksmith shops and then the cottages in the back, and they then became houses. So these two are I think, no more than service streets. There was a map at the time, 
with all the plots marked on it. And we do have a list of those. These are the numbers <coughs> that um, given to the plots. And these are the dates of the first leases and the names of the original leasee, what they did, and the size of the plot. Now here's another lovely jigsaw puzzle to work on. So I'm sure we can put those places back on the map somehow because we can work out um, where these plots were because every single deed of the whole of the area owned by the town council survive. And I listed them all. They're in the archives. I actually did the listing. Um, so uh, we've got a lot of information there from the, what I'm calling the new town. Um, and this is probably what it looked like. Uh, seven two-storey buildings. This is um, Terrace Road and Cambridge Street, and this is where the um, Lloyd's TSB building is, which is demolished. Many of the houses, I think, were two-storey, and in the 1870s, when the leases were getting renewed for the first time, again, the council, town council made a very sensible decision and decided that people could renew their leases early on condition they improved their houses. And there were three things they were uh, expected to do. They had to change their bay, uh, their bow windows to bay windows. And if you look at the middle of our open bow pops, it's got both sorts of window. Um, they had to raise the level of the roof to the same level as the adjacent house to make them all look the same. And they had to render the fronts of the houses. And if um, they agreed to do that, then they could have uh, a renewal of the lease instead of 99 years, it was 75 years, uh, and, um, and at favor favorable terms. And that applies to the whole of the flatland that we're on now. That was all owned by the council until the 1970s. This is uh, Bridge Street at about that time. And one of the things, again, that the town council did, which was very sensible, there was a house um, porch projecting into Great Dartgate Street, which was a nuisance. And the town council offered the owner of that house a plot at the top of um, High Street, right at this end, um, in exchange for knocking down the porch. So they could clear the, the uh, Great Dark Edge Street, and he had a, a plot. I think he probably paid an annual fee for the plot, an annual rent, but he didn't have to pay the one off sum that they often had to pay when they got the lease. And then they said, other people can uh, rent the plots next door, but they've got to be to the same plan as the first house. So you're starting to get a bit of town planning here. The same sort of thing happened in Laurel Place, but nothing like the same scale. These have all subsequent, subsequently been demolished and replaced, but uh, we do have some plans to go with that. All right, so I said I've listed all the deeds for all this property that the town council owned on Northern Mall and then my stars. And uh, this is one of the very unusual deeds because it includes an elevation of the building and the plan of the plot. Most of this is standard legal terminology and there's only a tiny bit in there that's relevant. But often they refer to earlier deeds as well, which is extremely useful because you can put, put these all into sequence. Um, so that's a detail of the elevation. Um, Richard and I were in there recently because there's a very strange construction at the back, which I think is to do with keeping the, the soil that was once the cliff edge um, of um, um, so it's really nice to have the elevation and the plan at the front of the building um, in detail and the plan and the plot and the neighbours, which means it's going to help us with this jigsaw puzzle and putting them all back together. And then we've got, in another deed, a complete list of all the contents of the house. So again, this is extremely unusual, but it's really nice to know exactly what they had. And this is just a summary of it. So the drawing room on the first floor, bedroom um, on the ground floor, the main rooms were on the first floor, so they had a good view out. Two sofas, eight chairs, tables, two bell pools, ornaments and bellows, and then in the back bedroom, the bedroom on the washstand. Most of them had feather beds and separate straw or hair mattresses. It's lovely to have this sort of detail. Blankets were in bedrooms, but the sheets were in the living room. And then going down, the ground floor had a dining parlour, bedroom, servants' room, a living room. And all of this detail is really lovely. And then the patching kitchen, every single item is listed. A um, hundred groups of items are listed in that, uh, which is really nice. And it includes uh, brush light, which uh, is quite nice to see. There are no mention of furniture in, in that. And then on the back kitchen, we've got a list. And then it actually describes the sorts of uh, timber used for the furniture as well. So you can see whether, uh, Say the, the servants' room had oak furniture, but the rest of them had painted deal, which I think is really interesting. But there is only one deed that has that sort of detail, and it was up for sale at the time. Um, 
We, the other sources we've got for um, a history of leases and plots in the land, in, in the town, are the court records, which are actually quite detailed once they made the decision to lease them out. They had to give a, a title deed to the person, and we've got a few of those surviving.